Hello, and welcome to today's video. It's lovely to have you. So, today we're talking about AFID and how we would go about introducing foods when we're in the recovery process from, from AFID. So, if you've, if you've clicked this and you already know what AFID is, fantastic, that's great for you, but some people probably don't know what that is. So, what is AFID? AFID is an acronym that stands for Avoidant Restrictive Food Intake Disorder. So, this is most easily characterized by avoiding to consume certain foods for fear of the negative consequences of consuming said foods. And what we're looking at in the context of this video is somatic ARFID. So, we, what this would look like would be like avoiding to eat certain foods because they give us physical symptoms. So, this is... What, what I'm going to be trying to do in this video is trying to pinpoint that fine line between food avoidance from an ARFID perspective and avoiding food because it's hard to digest and we've lost the ability to digest it physiologically. This is a really, really fine line to draw. And this is actually very commonly what I see people struggling with now, where they have food sensitivities and they're avoiding foods but it's not actually because they've lost the ability to digest them, it's because they actually have an ARFID kind of situation going on. So we're gonna talk a little bit about what ARFID is, how it develops, how we need to change, how, like how we're eating, how we need to change the relationship that we have with food, how we can fix this. So I've got a little, little formula over here, so this is gonna be fun. And we've got a graph here as well. So it's quite, it's quite fascinating because heat, resolving a, an ARFID type situation requires us to use less logic. So uh, the logic is overexpressing and the intuition is underexpressing. And I'm trying to explain this to you in a very logical way, which is, which is kind of funny, it's kind of ironic. But this is the way that I have to go about it because when we're in an ARFID situation, logic is overexpressing and that's the language that I have to talk to you in. So the solution isn't for, for, for this problem isn't found in logic, it's found in uh, intuition and the emotional side of things. So what's happening in, in an ARFID situation is we have a parts conflict. So the best way that I can help you understand what a parts conflict is, is to use this graph that we have down here. So I know it's not, we're not, we're not doing the board chronologically today, we're starting down here. So the way that I want you to look at this is instead of having one, instead of being one person, like instead of me being William, one cohesive individual. Maybe when you're watching this video and you see it and you think, oh, that's like one guy. But actually inside me, I have a community of different parts. I have the inner child. I have the, the adolescent boy turning into a man. I have the man. I have all of these different parts as sort of communities inside me that all have different interests. So the adolescent boy turning into a man is like, wants to find recognition, wants to find his way in life. The man wants to take responsibility and wants to, to, to do something, to make money, to provide security to my family. But the inner child is like, I want to be safe. I want to have my basic needs met. I want to have food that I like and I can enjoy. And we have to look at ourselves through a parts perspective to find a solution to this problem. Because what's happening in an ARFID is we have we have found an imbalance in the parts that are expressing. So what's happening is, here, I've got this diagram here. So we've got one part here that is expressed. So this is, this is expression. So at this level, this line right at the top is expression. So anything under this line is not, is not fully expressing in a, in a healthy, conscious, aware way. So we've got one part of us that is expressing. And in an ARFID situation, it's usually, the part that's expressing is, I can't eat these foods because they make me feel this symptom or they make me, or I feel this emotion or this bad thing happens whenever I have this food. So this is the part that's expressing. But then what happens is we have the other part down here, which is, a, so we've got different levels of repression. We've got subconscious. So this is, when we're, ha when we're having this kind of situation manifesting as an eating disorder, it usually looks like anorexia or, or, or bulimia. So it's like this part expresses and you go through, through restriction or, or, or a purging. And then this other part, this, this inner child that needs nourishment is like, we need food, so we're gonna eat it. And then this, this part becomes suppressed, so it comes down here. And then this part it becomes in, it expressed. And 
you've swapped into one part being repressed and another part being expressed. And then you keep swapping back and forth between this. You also see this kind of pattern characteristic in the, the most um, obvious case that you see this happening where the, where the personality is so obviously split is in, in people who have most, multiple personality disorder. So we've got certain characteristics of an individual that are allowed to express and other parts that are suppressed. And then they swap. They swap which parts are expressing and which parts are suppressed, and that's when they've moved into one of these different subpersonalities. So that's a really cool way of, of looking at it. But this is this is normal, and this happens to everybody. Everybody is a community of parts. What 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 happens that causes this disease? What causes problems? What causes eating disorders? Which causes procrastination or low self-esteem or all of these different problems that are associated with this? is when we have an, in, an unhealthy and imbalanced relationship with these parts. So one part is expressing at the cost of another part, so another part is suppressing. As opposed to what happens in a healthy person, we're able to have a parts dialogue inside ourselves, where we're able to have both of these parts expressing at the same time. This is the only way that you solve this problem. If you keep swapping back and forth between expression and repression, you're just going to keep swapping back forever because one part can only remain repressed or suppressed for so long and it will even manifest as subconscious behaviors so this is like addictions eating disorders uh, manipulation being in codependent relationships or becoming narcissistic these are sort of like subconscious expressions where you you become disidentified but they still have to express the energy has to go somewhere but if it gets suppressed an even deeper layer and this is what you see happening when it wasn't safe to express these things subconsciously. So if it wasn't safe for you to become codependent or it wasn't safe for you to, to express these, this energy, these emotions subconsciously, you would repress them and express them internally instead. And at this point it manifests somatically as a physical symptom. So when we're looking at an ARFID situation, what we've got is one part is doesn't want to eat the food because it's afraid of the negative consequences. And then this other part really does want to eat. So this is why this is such a, an, interesting, um, an interesting position to be because this can be so easily overlooked as just having food sensitivities or because you have a disease and, and people say, okay, well, if you have a disease, you need to avoid gluten, you need to avoid dairy, you need to avoid these things that cause inflammation. But it's not, in, in, in this case, it's not actually the food itself that's causing the problem. It's the relationship that we have to the food and it's the, the parts imbalance, the parts suppression that causes the illness. So this part that wants to eat pizza or drink Coke or do all of the other things that are deemed unhealthy or unsafe, that's the most important thing here, it's deemed unsafe and we've associated that doing these things will cause the negative consequences to happen it becomes suppressed and if we can't express it, it has to manifest somewhere and it manifests as an illness and it manifests as multiple sclerosis or chronic fatigue syndrome or some kind of digestive complaint, um, constipation, diarrhea, heartburn, reflux, flatulence and gas, like it can, be, it can be anything, it can be arthritis, it can be head, neck, shoulder, back pain, it, it literally can be anything. Anything that causes a part to be repressed especially if it's repressed so deeply that it's only safe for it to express somatically, can manifest as any type of illness. It, and this is, what's, this is why it's really hard to catch, and this is why it's such a really fascinating thing, because it can really manifest as anything, depending on the metaphysics, depending on the person's genetics, depending on what's safe, depending on what meets the need. So when we swap back between these polarities, so what we do here is this part that wants to eat these other foods, we now eat the other food and that part expresses but we're doing it at the cost of this part and this part goes into repression and that's what causes the the reaction this is what causes the 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 negative consequence reaction to occur so to get to a point where we can do what this part wants to do which is eat a different food be it like pizza or bread or it, this can be even be healthy things you know i for me in in my situation with with my offered i could eat five foods and these were like super healthy foods and I couldn't even eat other healthy foods. I couldn't eat fruit or vegetables or even meat that was cooked in a way other than boiling. I couldn't have scrambled eggs. I couldn't have butter. I couldn't have celery juice. I, could, I could, literally couldn't have anything because I would have, this part wasn't on board. The, that part was like, uh, this is unsafe for me to do this. So when I did it anyway, that other part basically had a tantrum 
and it manifested as physical illness or as a, as a, as a negative reaction. So the most important thing when we're looking at an ARFID food introduction process, so there are physical elements to this, and I'm going to cover that towards the end, but the most important thing is we look at these parts that we have in conflict inside ourselves and make sure that we don't bulldoze one. So bulldozing is a process where one is in expression and it pushes past the other one and it just represses the other one. When you do this, you will either have a relapse, you will develop an illness. You're not in expression. This is not where health is. Health is like this, where both parts are expressing. So this might be... This is going to be different for everybody, and you, this is why I'm saying you need to have a parts dialogue. So you need to have this, this interaction, this conversation inside yourself with these parts, because they need to talk to you and tell you what they need. So one example with maybe having gluten or dairy or something like that might be, this food's really inflammatory, my body is weak and I can't handle it, and the other, that part feels really endangered by you consuming that food. Whereas... And, and the way that you currently know how to manage everything is to just avoid the food. But that isn't necessarily what that part wants. The part just wants to be reassured that it is safe and that the body is strong enough that it can handle this food. So when you are able to communicate with this part and say, actually, we're really strong now, we're really resilient, we can, we can handle this, this other part wants to eat it, and I'm reassuring you that it's actually safe for us to do this. The other part is now like, okay, well, I'm happy with your decision to do that. I'm on board. So we've brought it from repression up to expression. And now both parts are in agreement with your decision to, to eat the food. And therefore, you don't have a reaction. So for me, this actually looked like within a span of 24 hours, I went from having a restrictive diet of five foods to, to unlocking basically all foods. So gluten and dairy and sugar and lactose and FODMAPs and histamine and, and everything because I was able to shift the narrative that was happening inside my body from suppression to expression, where all parts were, were happy. But this can be really tricky, especially in a somatic ARFID, because the parts that we have that are in resistance to us eating these foods, we don't know how to talk to it, and that's why it's manifesting physically. It wasn't safe for it to communicate with us in the past, through any way other than the physical symptoms. So to start a dialogue, we have to feel into this physical sensation. So the way that I start this would be with some type of somatic modality. So I use SRT, somatic release technique. I'll give you more information about that if you're interested. Some things that you can Google or do research on would be things like somatic experiencing. There's a book called The Body Keeps the Score, pretty cool book. There's a lot more information now about somatic modalities that are out there. And this is where you have to start in a somatic ARFID expression because this is the level that that part is currently able to communicate at. And when you start to learn the language that this part speaks in, and you start to understand what its needs are, what it's afraid of, how to look after it, how to communicate with it so that you can get it on board with the decisions that you make in your life, it won't go into repression when you, when you eat the food because you're able to communicate with it, you're able to dialogue with it, you're, like, you're able to bring it on board with the decision, listen to its insight, and change what you do with its best interests at heart. And then that part is able to express. It doesn't become repressed or suppressed or somaticized. And you are able to eat the food and not have the reaction at the same time. So this is the most important thing when we're looking at an ARFID food introduction is when you're trying to try a new food, you need to look at this parts conflict inside you and get all of, the port, all of the parts on board before you proceed with eating the food. If you don't get the parts on board, there's a good likelihood you'll have a reaction because the other part isn't in agreement. Sometimes you'll react to certain foods and not to others. And this is because the body or this part perceives certain foods as dangerous and other foods as safe. But if you're not able to communicate with the part, it's, you're kind of going to be gambling because sometimes it's going to work, sometimes it's not. Sometimes you might have a reaction to a food and then you might eat the same food and not have a reaction to it. And this is because the part was or wasn't on board with the decision at the time that you, that you decided to do that. So learning how to talk with these parts is really, really important. So you'd start on a somatic level, then you can move to parts work. There's, um, <coughs> excuse me, there's a few ways you can do this. So there's I think there's one called IFS, Internal Family Systems. That's a parts work therapy modality. The one that I like is Teal Swan's The Completion Process. Looking at yourself as a community of parts can be, can be really helpful. And I also include this kind of thing in the, 
this is the next step to SRT because once you once you have released whatever has somaticized, you then have to communicate with it and dialogue with it. So this shadow work, parts work type phase comes after you've you've started releasing this from the, the, the somatic level. So what what's happening here is this this is the expression cycle that we're stuck in with the foods that we choose to eat. We overemphasize logic and we undervalue our intuition. And we do this because we the, the, the basis of this is we feel out of control. So when we feel out of control, we try, try to take back that control however we can. And for some people that is narcissism or codependency, for some people it's an eating disorder, for some people it's obsessive compulsive disorder or ADHD-like tendencies or stimming or doing repeated things, OCD kind of behaviors, everybody's different. But when we lose control, we have to find control somewhere. So we do this with logic. We try to, we try to use logic to, to take control and avoid feeling the pain of being out of control. So what we need to do is try to rebalance this relationship. So we need to let go of some control. We need to use our logical mind less. So this almost always happens with, with ARFID and these types of situations is the foods that we allow ourselves to eat or that are deemed our safe foods are usually really like super healthy. You know, they're gluten free, dairy free, maybe they're low fat, maybe they're low sugar, maybe they're like super restrictive. I know some people get to the point where they're just on a carnivore diet because it's two pronged at this point. You've got physical, physiological intolerance, but you also have the ARFID component as well and meat is all that's left. So we have to take a step back and try to try to find the good in the foods that we have demonized or that we've rejected and seen as bad. So we need to reduce the logic. So logic is overexpressing. We need to bring this back down. And intuition has been undervalued and we don't trust it and we need to bring it back up. So intuition in this situation would be like, what do I feel like? What do I feel like eating? And it might, and, it, and the thing that's gonna to come to mind, it probably isn't gonna be healthy, healthy as what your ARFID would say is healthy. And it's gonna be something that you would logically, you would logically explain yourself out of eating that food. But that's your logic over-expressing and your intuition under-expressing. So what we need to do is, we need to figure out the part that feels out of control, that feels unsafe, that is using logic and controlling the food to, to create this bubble of, or this, it really is an illusion. It's an illusion of safety. And we're using it to suppress our intuitive instincts of what we actually wanna eat. So we need to get this part that feels unsafe on side, reassure it, make it sure that it does actually feel safe and is on board with the decision. And then we need to try to allow the intuitive side. So this is the part that's being, being repressed. We need to try to allow this part to express and to choose what we wanna eat. And the thing is, there's so much more to, to food and diet than just nutrition and just the logic or the amino acids and the minerals and the vitamins and stuff that goes into it. Food is energy and your body is an energy conversion machine. If you want to go somewhere in your life, if you want to achieve certain goals, if you want to do certain things, if you want to make money, you want to find relationships, your body needs to be fueled with what your body is asking for to take you where you want to go. You don't get to go where you want to go if you don't give your body what it needs to take you where you want to go. And you do this by getting all of your parts in agreement with what it is you're supposed to be eating. And this is a constant dialogue that you need to be having all of the time. You get better at it and as you learn the language, the conflict becomes less and you're able to resolve conflict disputes inside yourself more easily, but it really is a process that does take some time to learn. So, so I've covered all of this. So this is, this is looking at it from the emotional ARFID perspective, the, the past perspective. So bridging the gap now into the physical, how do we do this, but also support the body with understanding that different foods are, are, are more difficult or easier to digest than certain other foods. So the first thing to do is you have to do this parts conflict resolution. If you don't do this, even if you do have the ability to digest the food, your body will react to it or the part that is in resistance to you taking this action will resist it. It will not be on board with the decision and it will manifest as a symptom or as a reaction or you won't digest it and it, you, it will look like you don't have the ability to digest it, but you actually do. It's just you didn't get that part on board. So we have to start just by trying things. So once you're able to get the parts on board about what things you wanna try, try them and see how you respond. 
there are certain foods that are harder to digest. Like for me, the things that are really hard, and I, I even still struggle with a little bit today, would be things like raw nuts and seeds, especially when they've not been prepared properly. So they haven't been soaked and sprouted. So I find it, it, this is where I have a problem. If I have lots of excess fiber, so if I have like three salads in one day, that will give me digestive problems because it's very, it's very hard to digest. It's, but that's, the thing is, that was me pushing to try to eat healthy again. So um, there was some level of parts conflict with that because, I mean, to be honest, who the hell wants to eat three salads in a day? I, d I don't know anybody that would do that out of, out of choice if that's what they actually want to eat. And I think I have some pretty exciting salads and even still, I don't want three in a day. So it, raw stuff is just harder to digest. So you might be surprised when you get these parts on board, what you're actually able to digest. For me, in my head, it was like lactose will be really hard, dairy, conventional dairy will be really hard, gluten, that was one that took me a long time to, to overcome my fear of. And when I started having it, it was like, it was completely fine. I had absolutely no problem digesting it at all. No physiological reaction at all. So that doesn't make sense to your logical mind, but it's about talking to that part and getting it on board with the decision to try and then see how you feel. And if you feel bad, Sometimes it might be that you didn't do a parts conflict resolution properly. But sometimes it might be that the food is just a bit hard, harder to digest. So the general rule of thumb is, think about, just, just look at it. You can tell how hard food is to digest when you look at it. Imagine a cooked carrot versus raw carrot. A raw carrot is way harder. Imagine like raw kale versus kale in a stir fry. Very, very different. Think about, I don't know, maybe beef jerky versus beef in a, in a chili or something like that, or in a bolognese. They're very different. And you know that when you're eating because you feel how hard they are to digest. So try, you have to try to find that balance and be gentle with yourself. Ask yourself if it's a parts conflict. And, and the thing is that the real test is when you get good at doing a parts conflict, when you, when you get good at doing this resolution inside yourself, both parts will be on board with the decision, but then you'll also have some compassion and you'll be able to feel the parts saying, we like this food, we want to eat it, but it's just not the right time yet. And these parts will tell you that and you'll know. And at that point, you know that that's, that's where you're at. And it doesn't really feel like you're, you're missing out or that you're, you've lost the food because you understand that it is quite hard food to digest. And even in that situation, there's usually a lot you can do to make the food digestible. So if it's the nuts and seeds, for example, you can soak, sprout, remove the skins, maybe turn them into a bread or something like that. Or if you soak them, sprout them, and then, re then dehydrate them again, usually you can tolerate them. Like I can eat some nuts and seeds if I prepare them properly. So again, it's about making sure that we're preparing food properly. And, a and some of the foods that are considered to be normal to consume, they're, they're actually not that normal to consume. No, no ancestral cultures ever ate raw nuts and seeds. They always soaked, sprouted, prepared them properly because that's the way you get the most nutrition out of them and how you make them less difficult for your digestive system to digest. So make sure that you're, you're doing this um, parts conflict resolution first and then be gentle with yourself. Understand that different foods are, are more easy or more difficult to digest. So nuts, seeds, fiber, they're usually very hard. I find animal products are quite soft. The more refined foods generally seem to be quite easy. So this was something that surprised me. I could do like croissant from the from the supermarket, fine, I could do a baguette, I could do refined bread, but then I tried to do sourdough bread, which is less refined, and I couldn't, I couldn't handle it. So that was something that didn't make much sense to my logical mind until I thought about, actually, it kind of is a little bit harder to digest because there's probiotics, there's lots of compounds that have been produced, it's not as broken down as these other things because they're so refined. So it was like, okay, well, I'll, I'll listen to that and, and do, do, do what works for me. So the biggest, the most difficult part is figuring out why we have to take control and why that part feels so unsafe and reassuring it to feel safe again. That's the biggest part. If you can overcome that milestone, the rest is really just trial and error and being compassionate with yourself and understanding that if you've been on a restrictive diet for an extended period of time, when you start eating more foods again, your gut is gonna take some time to adjust. Your microbiome is gonna take some time to adjust. It is likely that you will gain some weight while your body recovers and then you will lose it again. That's, your body is looking for homeostasis. And if you've been under for a long time, homeostasis isn't coming up, coming up to normal. It's going over and then coming back down. So you have to just be compassionate with yourself and understand that this is part of the process and everything's actually working out as long as you have these parts on board. So my 
my advice for when you get to that point where you're having these conflict resolutions and they're, they're, they're working very well would be eat according to your appetite, eat what you feel like, even if it doesn't make any sense. Like for the last four days, two out of three meals in a day for me are basically just a baguette with rotisserie cooked chicken with butter. That's it. And it doesn't feel right to me, but I am feeling, my performance is extremely high. My body composition is looking amazing. It, it's just working because that's what my body's asking for. And when you provide these things that your body's asking for, it doesn't ask for them forever. I've been through phases since unlocking all of these foods where I crave certain foods for a certain period of time and then they disgust me. Like the first month after I had my breakthrough, I was drinking a really strong lemon, lemon water every, every evening. Like really, really strong, like super acidic. And I did it for a month. And then after that, the taste of lemons just repulsed me. It's like I couldn't go to sleep until I had the lemon water. And then a month later, I couldn't even stand the taste of lemons. So your appetites will fluctuate and change. And I find this is really helpful when we're eating foods that we kind of don't see as good. So I'm going through a phase where I want to have crisps or french fries. Have them. You, you're not going to want to have them forever. I've been through phases where I had, I would eat a bar of chocolate every day for two weeks. And then the day after that, the thought of eating any chocolate was repulsive to me. And that's just because I'm listening to what my body's saying and I understand that if I allow it, it doesn't mean this is forever. It doesn't mean my body's gonna want this forever. It just means this is what it needs. It needs to have this right now to get me where I wanna go. And then that's gonna change when where I wanna go changes or when it needs something different, I'll have cravings to eat something else. And then you eat that to your appetite. Don't overeat, don't undereat. Eat to what you feel like you wanna eat. You have, this, this goes both ways. If once you start listening to your body, you have to listen both ways. If your body tells you to eat, you have to eat. If your body says don't have something, don't have something. I can have alcohol now. I tolerate alcohol, no problems. But I was out one time and everybody was having alcohol. I went to have some alcohol. My body said, no, not today. And you have to listen. And I listened and I was fine. I know if I didn't listen, I would have had a horrible reaction to it because my parts weren't on board and it said, we can't do alcohol right now. It's not okay. So I didn't. So this is one of those things where with with this new awareness, you also gain a lot of responsibility. This can be really cool. You can heal a lot. You can get a lot of results from doing this, but you also now have to take responsibility for all of these parts that you have in dialogue inside yourself. And if you ignore what one of them is saying, you will experience negative consequences because you're pushing yourself into, into suppression, into uh, somatic or subconscious expressions of these, of these parts. And you will have symptom flare-ups or you will have your addictive behaviors manifest again, or you will have, you'll have a flare up. And it's really good when you can get to a point where you can start to see these subconscious and somatic expressions as clues or indicators that you're in a parts conflict. And then instead of trying to like say abstain from an addiction or trying to suppress a symptom with medication, you can say, okay, well, I'm in a parts conflict, let's resolve the conflict and then the addiction goes away and the symptom disappears because there's no conflict anymore. So think about the digestibility of foods. You may be surprised at what your natural appetite is, especially if you've been under eating for a long time. For the first three or four weeks for me, I was eating upwards of seven to 8,000 calories in a day, which is absurdly high and it's not sustainable for, for anybody, nobody, unless you're like that, the strongest guy in the world. You don't eat that, that, that food, but I understood this is not forever. This is just my body trying to find itself back in homeostasis. And if you've been under eating for a long time, you have to overeat so that you can come back to normal. You don't just come from, from under to normal. You have to go over back and, and then come back down into normal. So that happens with your food intake. That's gonna happen with your weight. That's gonna happen with things like your energy. Your energy is gonna spike up and then maybe it will come back down a little bit, back to normal. It's a, it's a process and you just have to constantly have these parts in mind and keep working on this, on this dialogue. And it's a bumpy process and it does take time and you will mess it up a few times in, in, in the recovery process. I'm eight months into this now and I can tell you I've had at least six or seven flare-ups where I've had parts conflicts that I haven't been able to resolve. And symptoms flare up. I'll have a gastritis flare-up, I'll get acne, I'll have some chronic fatigue crash or something. And then I realized, okay, this is a red flag. I'm stuck in a parts conflict. 
open this dialogue, get the part on side, listen to what it has to say, align my life and my behavior in a new way, symptom disappears. So this is really powerful when you understand this concept of, of a parts conflict. It explains, it's like the missing link in addiction, eating disorders, um, codependent tendencies, like so many different problems. It's all about parts conflict. So once you learn how to do this, not only will this help you with ARFID and with, with eating disorders, this has a, a broad effect on everything. And once you can know how to do this in yourself, you can do this in your organizations, like where you work. You can do this in your family structures. Like if somebody ever bulldozes past another person, the whole family loses. You might not be able to see it so obviously, but the whole family loses. Just as if you suppress one part in your side yourself, you lose. The only way you win, the only way you're healthy, the only way that you achieve the goals that you set for yourself, the only way that you get where you wanna go in life is if you're in full expression of all of your parts. If this is, so for anyone familiar with the law of attraction, this is what alignment is. This is bringing all of your parts into agreement about the course of action that you're gonna take. If you have one part that's going this way and another part that's going this way, not only do you stand still in the middle, but you rip yourself apart and you get ill and you, you feel awful, you, you beat yourself up that you tell yourself to do things that are unrealistic and then never do them anyway, you're in a conflict. You need to come together and find, find what both of these parts want, what they have in common, and then agree on what the new course of action is and go in a different direction. And both parts will be happy with that. And that's, that's alignment. That's where health is. That's where your optimal career is. That's where you're going to find the romantic life that you want. That's how you heal. It's about getting your parts to agree with the course of action that you're going to take. So just going to check to see if we have any questions. Let me know if you found this an interesting video so far. Because I know this is quite a, an interesting concept to talk about. So Sam Miller says, oh, hi Sam, it's nice to, nice to have you. My gut is healed after two years, but I am scared to death to try, to try gluten again. I, I get that. So at, at this level, you've got a, you, you must have a parts conflict going on, I, I would imagine, because there's a part of you that's really scared to include gluten in your diet again, but there's another part that probably wants to be able to go to a cafe or go to a restaurant with friends, just enjoy a peaceful night out. And the truth is, you are gonna be stronger, you're gonna be a healthier person if you can figure out this parts conflict dynamic and bring both parts into agreement with the course of action to take. So this part that's afraid of you having gluten, may the solution that you found right now to keep this part happy is to just avoid gluten. But this suppresses the other part that wants to be able to eat gluten and wants to be able to do all of the things associated with eating gluten, like having an easy life, being able to like have a, like it, sometimes you just don't have the energy to cook and it's nice to just be able to go to the shop, get a baguette, shove some chicken in it and eat it. You know, convenience. There's, there's so much good that comes from it. So your life isn't as good as it could be if both of these parts were content. And the part that's afraid you're currently appeasing it by just avoiding the food, but that might not be the best way. The best way is probably closer to reassuring this part that gluten isn't that bad. And I can tell you from personal experience, gluten isn't that bad. It, it can be a problem for some. If you have celiac, yeah, you're probably not gonna be eating gluten. But sometimes celiac disease is an expression of a parts conflict and you can resolve the parts conflict and then you can become gluten tolerant again. So you really have to look into the root cause, you really have to look at the parts and what they want and communicate with them to figure out a new course of action. Once you, once you figure out what the parts want and you get them all on side, you will have a new idea of what you need to be doing and it will take you towards the best life that you could be living. Trust me, I, 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 I'm living it, I'm a living example. You can really change the trajectory of your life by resolving these parts conflicts. So, no more questions, that's everything for today. If you have any questions, do leave them as a comment, do let me know, I'll make sure that I answer them in the future. Also, I'm gonna be doing another video shortly where I'm answering questions in support groups. So make sure that you leave as a comment any support groups that you'd like me to join so I can go through and answer questions in there as a, as a video. So that's everything for me today. Hope you found this really helpful and insightful. This was a video requested by one of my one-to-one -one clients, Jody. Jody, you're doing absolutely awesome. I'm so impressed with you. Moving from starting on a physical intolerance to understanding, okay, maybe this is an ARFID situation, and then being open enough to be able to 
to, to ask for some support with this in a, in a video. I think it's really cool. I think it's going to be really helpful for, for many people. Oh, Jodie's actually here. So she says thanks. You're, you're most welcome, jo Jodie. It's been a really uh, interesting video. Let me, know if this has been, let me know if this has been helpful for you. We have our SRT session coming up soon, so it should be really fun so we can get started with that. I'm really excited to see how that goes. Sam says, thank you, William. You're most welcome, Sam. Okay, so that's everything for today. Let me know if you have any more questions. I'll see you soon. Ciao.